Uh, we're back with part two of the Melbourne Pro Punters panel and a uh, couple of things off the top. Yeah, just off the top, we, we, we like giving people life tips as well as just uh, trying to find Oh, no doubt, yeah. Um, and well, I've got two, two people with young families here. Sometimes you end up being a bigger hermit because you're sort of stuck there. In your... The Night Of. Have you heard of The Night Of? Find it on uh, DVD. It was originally particularly produced by James Gandolfini, Soprano, aka yeah. Tony Soprano. Eight part series. Get it off Foxtel, it is awesome. Set in New York City, and it's Not a off. cracker. And it's as good as The Wire, Sopranos, Breaking Bad, it's that level. Oh, yeah, so, it. so in other words, we'll never see it on free-to-air TV Correct. over here. It's far too right. intelligent for the crap that's on free-to-air, so you find, track down The Night Off, and uh, and if you've already seen it, let, let me get in touch with Twitter, RT Ralphie, or after you've seen it, and just thank me profusely. <laughs> And how's, how's, uh, how's young Alfred going, mate? Is yeah, he, uh, Alfred's going along all right. He's he? sleeping through the night, back at things to place, so he's filling yeah. up because I just run second and third all the time. <laughs> first. So, uh, yeah, he's Talk going about right. curse. Uh, me and the uh, Fox Plays tech service subscribers have been having a bit of a rough trot lately. It hasn't been much good. And then uh, we had a really good day on Sunday, and guess who didn't put the bets on? It was funny as day. Old mate was far too busy with Alfred. All, all these oh. so called pressing commitments. <laughs> And uh, I, I got the. Uh, I looked at my emails 20 minutes after the last, and then went through and checked the results and seen that it cost myself 600. So, well, happy man. Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, I'm Pops, sure all the other subscribers really appreciate you uh, making sure they won, though. Like, like gaps in the market. I tell you what, could stop time. Uh, Pops, we also still have the uh, package special that's still available via One to Follow for your stuff, and I believe. Is the tech service in there too? I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. Will they get that thrown in? Anyway, they may well get that thrown in. It's 510 bucks, and it'll get you through to the end of the spring carnival. So, um, you know, you get <laughs> lots of useful. I mean, there on Saturday on Saturday Mooney Valley, if you had just followed the betting plan straight down the line, you would have finished minus five units on Saturday, which wasn't a disaster. It was okay, but uh, all the guys in the chat room had a winning day uh, because I left one race off the betting plan, which was the merriest race and. One of our great uh, participants in the chat room, Cliffy, asked me what I'm doing here. I said, oh, I've got no conviction about this race, but I'm going to back these five horses. And they ran the first four, and a couple of the guys had the first four, and it paid 10000 or something. So. so once again, more proof of the curse. If I'm not there, and it's, it. uh, I'm not tuning in, kiss then death. Kiss of, kiss of death, jumpy. And then, so. You just remind me there about what you just said earlier. Um, there was a jockey, his nickname was Christmas. You heard that one? His nickname was Christmas. Because they reckoned with enough notice he could stop Christmas. Yep. <laughs> or uh, the jump jockey from Adelaide whose nickname was Autumn Leaves because it kept falling down. Yeah, but for different reasons. <laughs> I think Autumn Leaves was fair Yeah, anyway. Uh, Mooney Valley, race Mooney Valley. It did. It was, um, you, walked it, race. you walked at Pots. This. No, I've got a contrary view and I, and I accept really? that my view is minority. But I think that track was very, it was nuanced. It's quite, it's hard to get a handle on because it's, it's almost a bit schizophrenic that track on Saturday. I think there was a lane there on the inside that was worth about two lengths or so, but you had to be the right horse. So in six of the races that lane was used, and they've run quick time by horses that use that lane. In the other three races there were roadblocks in those lanes, and it meant the horses out wide could get into it, and they won the race. But they've run slow times in all those. So is that supposed? Did you walk it with any inkling that there was a little? Well, I walked it expecting that the inside two lanes would be significantly better. And so I was wrong. It wasn't as I thought. It, I don't think you're wrong. I thought it would be better than I thought it, the inside would be stronger than it was. But not. Well, maybe another length stronger. But I, I thought just any horse that got on that part of the track would be very hard to get around. But in a couple of races, they weren't. And there was often the wrong horses. The wrong horses, yeah. That's what, I don't that, think you're wrong. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think the track played well, but yeah. the circumstances made winners come from different areas. Yeah. I think if the right horses had gone on those in those spots, they would have run. Craig, yeah. just saved us up from the dispersal sale there. Is this okay? Yeah. Uh, race five at Mowie's yeah. just been yeah. run. Punters, if anyone's wonder, wondering why. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. A chance we're going to get getting people to watch this if we're not even watching this. <laughs> So anyway, I'm oh, saying yeah, if, if the right horses point. had got on that, that inside section of the track, they would have won all nine races. But exactly. you know, so Nigel Lissamar became a roadblock in the first race. Uh, the cleaner, to me, labelled himself as finished because he couldn't do what he should have been able to do from that with the use of that lane in his race. Um, I'm so sure. 
Well, that's just an opinion. You know, that, yeah, that, I could be wrong about that. Um, uh, Oscar's my mate, Pa. Become a road block. He just obviously is a wet tracker only. Well, he's too fast. Couldn't utilise what, what should have been the winning section of the track and it just highlights how good Mr. Individual's run was. So anyway, and that's that's pretty much it. But the other the other races were all dominated by that section. So anyway, we'll go through them race by race. And then well, race one was taken out by the man who just took out race five at Moe in Craig Williams on Dalton, who was uh, five fifty into five dollars on the VIP. Yeah, well, again, so this race for me, I only bet in it because I was betting off the map, and within fifty metres, I knew I was cast because I'd met Nigel Lissima second last, and all of a sudden, oh, Jeff my mate uh, one by one, and my my mate Corey Parrish holding the lead, Corey, like you would have at the provincials. Twice on Saturday, Corey gave up the front when he never would have done that at the provincial. So it's a lesson for young John. Lassie, the other one. Yeah, the Lassie. He never would have given up that spot if he was riding where he's more comfortable. Hence my point with Tashby last week. Anyway, so Nigel Lissima goes to the front and then it becomes very awkward for Kenny Anna and uh, Craig Williams probably outrun Ollie. So. Now, you, know, you said two things there. <coughs> what was the odds of, uh, of uh, Dalton? Five fifty four to one or something. What, what did you start on? What did you start on when, the, when it hit the line on the totes? Uh, didn't say. Four dollars. Okay. Cross. Vroom. What does that normally tell you, Dan? When they're four dollars on the tote and they're five fifty to five dollars. I mean, Zelko's team figured out that, that, that Nigel Isma was going to lead. How they could have done that's beyond me, but they must have. So like, they would have liked Craig Williams. They would like the weight drop. They would like the weight drop. They would like the likely slow tempo. Now. Here's the thing, I don't accuse anyone of anything ever, but I do get angry when stewards don't ask questions that come through market expectations. Kenny Anna was friendless, now I was a little bit keen on it. Dean Lester made his best bet on Saturday morning, yeah. I heard. It's saying that though with Dean, he does pretty much best bet at every time he goes around. No, no, but what I'm saying is, so we've got someone outside of our circle yeah. who's respected. Yeah, I was friendless. Now, I, after 100, it was written negatively, and then at the 900, he just sat there, Ollie, and Craig Williams outrode him because he was behind. Uh, he was <laughs> he was in front of Craig Williams, and Craig Williams outrode him. Yeah. Now we all get right and wrong, even the greats, and they can be outridden by another great, which he was in this case. <laughs> but for the stewards not to ask a question means they are out of touch with two things: one, with what punters who are keen on Kenny Anna wanted to know yeah. why did you sit there and two the data room that people will whack, whack off about said Kenny Anna friendless Dalvin smashed in so the information for the data room should have been you need to start asking questions and as you've often said Potts the more questions that are asked the more respect jockeys have for the stewards that they're on yeah. and I think that is a very fair comment to make and I'm not suggesting anything underwood in the slightest but I am saying Questions should have been asked and stewards let down punters by not asking. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, I watched the race a few times, but I, I agree with what you say, Rob. But I mean, the market got it right. No, no, good. Hey, hey good on him. And, and that's yeah, because the market got it right. They said, well, the market got it right. You know, yeah. I was surprised it wasn't. Damn, it wasn't queried about early in the race. But he, if you watch the replay, he was slower half. I thought set three wide and come. Yeah, well, not possibly. But yeah. I probably should have asked him a quick. What price did this beat, Kenny? Uh, two eighty to three sixty. I think. Yeah, I'll read it third. I mean, what do you get beaten? Well, I marked it very hard to like. I marked it three eighty and put it out as a bet because I expected it to drift to three eighty. Yeah, to right. be honest, it made sense to me. But I, I didn't expect Dalton to be well back because it's a back marker and that track was unlikely to suit back markers. I just, I think the only way you could have backed Dalton is if you knew Nigel Lissman was going to lead, and that's the part of the race that I find very curious. Well, just, just. Put, Honestly, uh, Corey, kick up and hold the front, mate. You're on a front-running mare. She's not much good. She's one paced, and yeah. you would have had a 50 to one shot outside you that was going to be a nuisance for every other runner. Right. Anyway, the form shit in the race. That's yeah, yeah it's mare, mare's, mare's rubbish. Uh, race two was taken up, taken out by Mahaney, who was five out of six and was six ninety best. I think this is the horse that gives you a clue that that inside lane was a significant advantage if you used it correctly. This horse is beautifully ridden, used the lane perfectly. It's ran far better time than it should be able to run. It's a career high rating, which I would say is misleading. If, 
based on just the raw times, if this horse had it been in the uh, wait for age race, it would have run in second. So, um, can you can you uh, can you fluke a career high rate? I'm not being smart ass and asking. That. What I'm saying no, is, you, you can have everything just work out really well. For you. I mean, everything yeah, can be perfect yeah, on the day. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he had a bunch of resuming stayers behind him. He got on the lane. Soft lane. He was fit. Just yeah, the run, he just it was a beautiful ride. Like the, the sectionals would be very even. That horse has just gone really well and had he stay, had he stay in the sun. So again, with the questioning, to me on the video it looked like Damien let uh, him be crossed on raw impulse by last wish, it was 60 to 1. So instead of being third defence, he was fifth three back defence. And from there, and as you often say, we said in part one about the low draws, I thought that was the only query with the price. Would the low draw get him in trouble? But you would, you're entitled to ask for more urgency, and you're entitled to ask why there wasn't more urgency. Because three back Mooney Valley with the rail out three is Shitsville. The weird stay resuming, was it? Yep. Off a, a 2400 metre run. Uh, no, but isn't there two different issues? I'm saying one, one is the issue about, yes, you're entitled to do it that way, but the second thing is if we want people to be interested in racing more, then more questions are better. Well, I, I think what you're, the point you're raising is absolutely valid. I mean, stewards should, in, in looking at that race, the stewards should ask Damien Oliver, has he given it every chance by allowing last week's the crossing? Like, I mapped last wish last, right? I was shocked when it began so well. I had no history of it. Funnily enough, the ratings to win map, which is just a computer generated thing off its, actually mapped it in front of Royal Impulse, and I was like, how, did they, how are they getting that? Like, I couldn't figure out how they were coming to that, because I, anyway, but so there must have been something in that horse's history that, Indicated that that was possible, but you know, so I, I think it's an error on Damien's behalf to allow that horse to cross him. That's I would agree with that. There's a hidden one here, observational, stand by. Take the lines. All the lords, all the lords yeah. from the weekend, yeah. having them, having them. They're just like, yeah. <laughs> the caravan's here, here we are. Oh. <laughs> uh, race three was taken out by a man we t continually can't catch in Tony McAvoy. With Hay Doc, who was it. five Thank out of six. I caught, it, I caught it, which was good. Um, Can so I just say to all my subscribers out there, for the rest of your time that you get my stuff, no matter what I say about a Tony McAvoy horse, <laughs> doesn't matter what I say, just fucking ignore me, I'll be wrong. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter. I'll be wrong, no matter what it is. We might get Tony on the show. Oh, I like Tony, he's, he's a great fella. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice man. Well, I used to do a carnival with Dean, he used to say that about Lord of the Sky. He said, I've been running every single career starts, just don't listen. <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm just going to get it wrong. Hey, um, so, how could anyone watch this race, hey Doc, free wide the trip effectively, and say that cover is so important? Well, it depends on temper. No, no, of course it does, but all I'm saying is... So, so I'm going to switch you, Ralphie, I haven't... It was a good, good, good spot to be in, in that race. I haven't done all your stuff yet, so I have no idea what you, what you might confirm or deny what I'm about to ask. You're saying with Vince's... I'm, I'm guessing that Lord Macau went too quick early, Lost his momentum mid race, and that helped the horses that were through wide. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, Haydock got a significant anchor drop too, but as you say, that's, that's exactly what happened. I mean, there was a big anchor drop from the monster anchor drop from leaders Lord McCow and Brookwater, and the biggest problem. No good, Michael. Michael Walker, big no no. Like, honestly, if you're going to do that, if you're going to work that hard early, keep your going. only choice keep is to going. keep going. As yep. soon as you hit the brakes, you crucify yes. yourself. So, so by extension, what you said, yeah, it depends on tempo, obviously. But isn't that the problem with Stable saying you must go out and get cover because? Well, with that anchor drop, the momentum's key. And Absolutely. there's, and I, yeah. I know it maybe wasn't in this, but in this, I'm noticing the country. I did actually a video comment at a race this morning at Cranbourne where the anchor got thrown out, and a few jockeys straight away peeled out just to get in the running line and get out, good get good, keep good moving, good. which is good to see. You yeah. know, just don't be victims of this. Get out and get, get, get the horse and if, if you're new to this, if you're new to this, it's a pretty easy analogy which we could all relate to, and that is if you're driving a car on a freeway and you're going right at the speed limit 100, and the person next to you is going 100, and then you get to the more open part of the freeway where it's 110, whack your foot in the uh, brake and then put your foot on the accelerator really quick and see if the bloke next to you goes past you. Because that's that's exactly the same thing. So when we see in the figures that horses anchor drop, it is a significant, significant uh, negative, isn't it? It is. Well, I think what happens is when they're slowing down, and actually they're using more energy. So what yes. DK's talking about, the horses in front want to try and slow down. The jockeys seem to think they're conserving energy by slowing down. But the jockeys that are pulling out and just maintaining their horses' momentum and making ground, 
are not using any more energy than the horses yeah. they're chasing, and they they making up ground on them. They're yeah. going from five lengths behind them to a length behind them, yeah. and it's cost them nothing. It's uh, it's a huge I, weapon if you if you if you can read it. To it to I was having, was having this very conversation with Vince Gale this morning, and he said uh, you can go around lunch and follow it. Um, and, and he said one thing he's really noticed. He's been doing it for 28 years, but in his own figures, he's just learning. It's worse for resuming horses because, as you say, it takes energy out of them. Yeah. So if they're short of fitness, it really accentuates it. Yeah. So I look for it even more if they're, if they're first up or early in their prep. The second horse there is a one to five. Yeah, nice horse. Who's that? Rocketeer. 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 Savage yeah. Lawn at sale. Savage Lawn really? at Vanilla. Yeah. Savage Lawn again there. These horse to five. He, 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 can, he can be a rapid, rapid improver. Unfortunately, I'm I'm I, I back to the I'm the winner. I uh, back MD and all this. Back to drop it. So I backed the Rocketeer and I backed Northern Line. Right? So Northern Line, I forgave the slow time of Geelong because I thought he was a horse that had a lot of escape for improvement. Strangely enough, Sports Bet and Crown Bet were really keen to lay Northern Line, so maybe they just thought they didn't forgive the time that I did. Yep. And but it was a it was a roadblock, so I'll be really keen to see how Rule Shane runs tomorrow to tell me whether that form's completely useless or whether Northern Line had an issue, but um, interesting that those two particular corporates were the ones that were leading the charge with Northern Line and D-Lay was all right. Uh, so, but it, if Royal Shame runs that badly tomorrow, I'll just go, they did it because the horse is no good and the, that race at Geelong is no good, that's what I'll say. But if Royal Shame runs really well tomorrow, then I'll be thinking Northern Line had an issue. Anyway, so my point was, the point I was trying to make, is unfortunately for the Rocketeer, it was behind Northern Line and got dragged out of the race. Otherwise, yep. it would have gone. It would have been in the finish with. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, race four was taken out by Vostok, which sent me to the wall pots to go and think about where I was placing myself in life. And this was also the race that had the bandit in it that Tommy Gilmore asked in. Well, this is one of those situations where stewards should have a completely forensic investigation. Every bet that was laid at Cranbourne last Sunday and every bet that was had at Mooney Low Valley draw. on Saturday, low draw, fair enough. I'm so, they might find nothing, there might be nothing in it. But I am saying yeah. that the two runs don't correlate and it's not right. That, but that, that sort of thing, punters shouldn't be asked to cop that. You, can, you shouldn't be able to win a race that's probably four lengths more difficult within six days when... So one of the things I reckon with quick backups. I don't know as wide as you do, Dan. I'm interested in your thoughts, but I reckon one of the things with quick backups when you see it, make sure it's not a, if it's if it's a genuinely unlucky run, lost up was whatever, um, and we saw it a couple of times through the year with uh, Divine Mr. Artie and a lot of love, and then when we in place for Sammy Pritchard won at 61 in the Stokes race, quick backup off an unlucky run in your head, treat it like a fast barrier job. Well, no, no. Because it's, it's going to take nothing out of the horse. No. That to me is your perfect setup for a good backup. No, that the, the short backup's the original Dr. Nick theory, isn't it? The, the old man always loved that, didn't he? The, whenever there was something in Sydney on the short backup, you can guarantee that Dr. Nick was going to be on it. It usually so. happened in longer races. More, you know, yeah. But the problem is the horse just showed no life at Cranbourne. Like it was third up in a race that really should have been winning. And it really didn't go at any stage. I know it didn't get an opportunity late, but it really didn't go. Like that, that run at Cranbourne to me is just really smelly. It's awful. So, uh, the and then, and then what, what I really then comes here, it gets into the same position at Mooney Valley. And he, what was going on with Damien there? Was there a cone of silence around him or something? Look, he's in the middle of the field, and no horse went anywhere near him. They just yeah, they, <laughs> they all just sort of moved out of the way and went, oh, oh Damien. And even Mossendar gets the home turn, it gets on the wrong leg and runs off the track and Lost Lock just goes sails through there and comes after Mr. Individual. If you're repricing that race, I think you pro you mark Mr. Individual about two to one. So with Mr. Individual, I reckon there's a point. I, I thought Ben Thompson was unfairly criticised for this reason. It was desperately unlucky. But you're entitled to press from wide on a fast horse. And everything kicked up inside it. Now that doesn't mean the kids done anything wrong. And in fact, I reckon if he went back to last to try to find a spot, he wouldn't have run second. Yeah. Well, it's run second. Like the game ball. The difficulty was he, sl he just slightly missed the start. Zar Speed Fresh has got out quickly. He's a faster horse than Zar Speed, but Zar Speed got that sort of three quarters of a length on him, yeah. and then became a nuisance for him the whole race. It's not. Ben did nothing, no, absolutely nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah. Not a thing. 
It's just unfortunate that it's the way it worked out, and he should have won the race. So. Uh, the Bandit should have this. <laughs> well, the Bandit could stay run a really nice race, but uh, he, he was on that lane that I think is an advantage, and he's a strong horse. So. Okay. But he can get out over ground, so it's hard to think that he won't win races over the carnival, you know? It uh, depends how high they aim with him, because it's best to come. Race 5, I came back from my walling session and we found Wild Rain Pots at 5.50. Well, we, also, we, also, we also backed Heatherly, did Jackie, so it wasn't... We did. You know, it was a winning race, but it wasn't... We do with Heatherly. So, we hear after the race, we hear all this after the race, that... Like, I knew she was a difficult barrier horse. But what I didn't know was that when she draws inside, she goes in there, misbehaves, and settles down before they jump. But after the race, we're told that Fuck up, because, she, because she draws wide and goes in line, she didn't have time to misbehave and settle down. So they let... <laughs> nice to know that before the race. She will, I here from explode next start, Heatherly. Uh, that couldn't have been a better setup. Uh, I'll tell you now, Ralph, I don't care what race she's in, I don't care how much she's got on, yeah. how should I would mark her on the figures, if she draws wide she's going to be the last horse in, I won't be back enough. Because you can't give away a length star, a length and a half star in 1,000 metre races. I don't know, it's a shame she stays in 1,000. Even at 1,100 or, yeah. you know, she's going to the Moira, isn't she? What's that now? I don't know. Oh, it's a thousand, no, it's still 1,000, yeah. So, like, Which she, she, she needs to draw a middle gate or something where she's got time to get all of her nonsense out of her. Um, Shidel was short of fitness. Um, Mally's ready to go further. Yeah, there'll be winners out there. Small, small field, but there'll be winners. And Shidel's a, she's a terrible fresh horse. I learned that last. Me and my mate Badisho were out there at Mooney Valley. And we, we did the show there yeah. before, before that meeting, and I was keen on her that night. She just didn't go fresh. And she's done the same again. Third up, she'll be ready to go. Uh, race six was the Atlantic Jewel Classic, and it was taken out by. Mary's at $26, uh, and it was shorter than that on the tights, so, interesting. Well, I marked the 12 to 1, I thought she was really easy to back, I wanted to mark her shorter. Um, I think the... Can't well, the, the, the margins, maybe. I've taken the, odds on once this year, and that was Mary's at Flemington. Oh yeah, you got it. Up. It's the only time I've taken odds on this year. Take the 25s there on Saturday, whatever it was. And yeah. Well, I, re I reckon I backed it on that fair. A minute and a half before jump and took twenty one dollars and then started twenty five or something. <laughs> or even longer. Like someone hated it. Like. Anyway, um the girl punters go and watch her first up run. That that's very interesting footage, that the video of her first up run is very interesting Audio. footage. Audio. OFF? Oh, what's OFF? -F. Then what's that stand for? Off. Off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't think you can say that, Dan. No, no, no. Ah, that's what I meant. I think you anyway, yeah. well, I'm just saying it's interesting. Didn't have things go Didn't have things go on. Seriously. Uh, but, yeah. but, uh, but what you can't do is fluke talent, as we often say. And what she did at Caulfield on debut was serious work. And uh, well, and that's the other time. But sometimes she's going to completely suck it up. Because when she gets beaten at Flemington, you look like a pot. <laughs> and when she wins four months later, no one remembers no, they don't why you look stupid. But having said all that, uh, this is a strong race. Whispering Brook yeah, that's my was horse beaten forward. through the anchor drop. Uh, it dropped 4.7 lengths in the mid race first up. So Chris Parnham got it wrong. Uh, should have kept it running with it. Its rebound was huge. You're looking at 100 metres past the post, it's clearly in front. Mary is a good horse. Well, Whispering Brook is the, clearly the best of the locals. I don't know what I've not seen yet, but clearly the best of the locals. And clearly you're a local now because she's raced here and she's here. Uh, and uh, I'll be getting on now for a thousand years. Okay. Can I take this opportunity to explain a couple of things that I'm talking about here? So first of all, this is a great example of what those two horses, Marius and Whispering Brook, use the lane I'm talking about. They ran a length faster than Voodoo Lang, who you would expect that he would have run significantly faster than them. They've even run faster last section. So I'm saying that is a, um, a reflection that, that inside those inside lanes were worth a couple of lengths. However, even even so, even if you take that couple of lengths off them, these are three-year-old fillies, and they've run faster time than the older horses on the day, which is another clue to the punters that these three-year-olds have got something on the older horses. Um, so when they start mixing... Did you say take a couple of lengths off the Yeah, because like, compared to Voodoo Lake. I'd add a couple. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, no, no. You, you, no. Can do, you can do it whichever way you want. But I'm you saying, 
I reckon you're 100% right and don't take anything off. Those fillies are really good. You've heard of those. Well, that's, that's, that's up to you. Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is they that's had... That's individual. Yeah. You, 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 back you, back you, can, you can do whatever you want with it, yeah. but I'm just saying they had use of the best part. When you're just looking at the raw times, it's unusual to have a three-year-old fillies race running faster time than the older ones. Maybe the old wasn't that good. True. Yeah. Well, that, no, that's true, Rafi. I agree with it. Because yeah. in that race, passing shot and a couple of other horses blocked the fast lane and yeah. he just... And so many horses... There's a stack of horses in that race that just got... Yeah. Taken back through the field, they had no chance. And he just—he looked really impressive because he's coming down the outside. But I'm, he's still a—he's an open-class sprinter. That's what he is. What, yeah, he's done sort of the impossible no, no, they, there they on they the day. Go so I'm good. saying the fact that those fillies have run better time is an indication that, as a group, so generally speaking, that's the reason why David Hayes is winning all these races at the provincials with these three-year-olds. When they normally normally they don't start winning races till December, January, and after Christmas. So it's most unusual no, winning so many races at the provincials, yep. and this is a, when these young horses start to take on. So we'll get an example tomorrow with perfectly safe. Is what I'm saying. So normally you wouldn't expect perfectly safe to be a strong chance in a race like that tomorrow, but she'll start favourite. Um, race seven was taken out by the visually impressive because there are people had, but <laughs> uh, that's yeah. I think that was the. Uh, the sort of consensus afterward during the betting. No, we're in the Herald Sun on Sunday. It's the new Spring Star of Victorian Racing. Um, okay. I, 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 I thought it was outstanding. Yeah, I'm not potting the horse. I think no, I'm not potting it. No. You missed the kick. Round them up. Go past them. Missed the kick. Did in the favour, I would say. Maybe, maybe not. The only not thing many did, horses. You still got to round them all up. So there was passing shot. I can't think it was outside, and they did they did take out half the field. So all the horses in behind. Fast and Rocky didn't turn up. And now yeah. it's... Sorry. Plus, yeah. so, you get the future. You'd feel better about this race if Fast and Rocking was himself, but he's obviously not, you know what I mean? Like he's... It's $10 on Betfair. Yeah. Clearly the best horse in the race. And this is one... If there's... Well, he hasn't come, but here comes another thing that gets you going. Oh, well, he's probably... His window's probably closed still in the prep. Yeah. You know. But again, stewards uh, asked the jockey who said it was a little bit flat. Because who cares? But what the market told you pre race was that it wasn't turning up. So who cares what the jockey said? Mm. Um, why, don't, why don't they ask the stable on why it was such a bad betting? The thing with betting in that race, um, anytime there was three dollars popped up, I know Ernie was behind me. Hello, Ernie. Um, he was behind me. He put up three dollars early doors. They took that immediately. And any time there was a three in front of the price, they took it with. Like they stamped it, and that's what the price, oh, the price was. Yeah. And that's yeah, what like, they were going to take. I, I set him out at 350 or 360 or something like that, because I expected him to get to that. I was, the, I was surprised he was so firm in the betting. I thought that they'd find alternatives. Where did Fast Cash end up anything? 100. You know, so so he, there was, he, should, he should have been able to run well on that race, shouldn't he? Exactly. That's unusual, that's weird. Okay, so there were five chances on ability, I would say. And they've run the trifecta three of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Vulac, Kenneray, and Seabrook Sun. Um, Kenneray's turned up short of fitness. Fast and Rocking, as the Betfair owner suggested, was going to run poorly, and Fast Cash ran horribly. So, well, if if uh, the market hated two of them, disliked Kenneray yeah. rather than hated them, all no. of a sudden then that you were last explains week. the, yeah. the, the, the track lady, I guess. So, anyway, so Seabrook, wasn't that good? Seabrook Sun, second well, start for uh, Darren Weir. Interrupted, the interrupted momentum. He, he's going to win races. For the, we're all get the best out of him. I'll give you a sneaky one. Tudor went significantly quicker than it did at first up when it missed the start. Tudor was the whole set size. Yeah. Now yeah, that was very, very good pace, which is always a good sign. So that's second up and a big gap between first and second. I know your general thoughts are in that situation, but yeah. I reckon that gives it a chance to elevate again significantly next up. Well sprung for me out of that race. Yeah, great. Right. Good run. Good always have me on that horse. Yeah. Good horse. Um, yeah. Four on pace. Yeah. Race eight was the uh, Dardo, and it was taken out by Awesome Rock, who was uh, sort of thirty-one dollar chance. I know a um, friend of the show, John o. Walsh, had he, he he was sort of with it, I think, and um, and I had something small on it after listening to what Troy said on the radio, and he sort of said, "Look, it needs luck," but I just thought there was enough in the price to have something on it to see if you could get that luck. Um, I spoke to, just near, as I was nearly finishing packing up, uh, I bumped into Michael Lynch from The Age who was walking out of the course with um, Pete Ellis. And I said, boys, 
toss and start them. Both of them just in unison, but he should have won. So, that was unlucky. Yeah. Ever seen. All the wee horses resumed there. Yeah. That's what you want to see, mate. Don't worry about them getting beat. But they Can we all have one a serious race? Just just on the or something? No, I don't think so. Um, well, there's another interesting one. Uh, one just, of our, just, just from the fringe, just on a little below. Uh, one of the big results I can remember, Potts was the third horse there, set square, you tipped her in an Oaks, yeah, which she won at $8. But, um, but the thing is, she hasn't won since then, I don't think. No, she and hasn't. she now has no qualifications for the bigger races mm. during the spring. So, so that creates a punny opportunity. Yes. Turnbull Stakes will be her race. Going to qualify for everything. She was. Yep. She's run several very good races. Since yeah, and, and she was busted open with ridiculous tactics in the Corfu Cup. Yep. And she, I reckon, that flattened her even for last prep. But now she's had a beautiful little build. Two, yep. two nice runs. So I think she's in for a nice. Oh, well, yeah, well, they they nicely, I mean, like a clean-up run for most of that field. So anyway, I'm not dropping know. off the cleaner. I'm mean, going to be very well, interesting when, next up. When are he's gone. When's he going to be? I know he's gone, but when is he going to be ridden at that relentless gallop? Next up. Next up. Third That's, up. In, in what? Underwood Stakes. Cool. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the anchor drops and yeah. they started going slow on him. Yeah. Callow, I think it was, who started doing that. Yeah. No, Trying to protect him and then lift it. At the, he used to go this relentless gallop mm. from about that. Yeah, just like he? really put him to the yeah. sword, yeah. Oh, now he's backing off and trying to sprint after the next. surprised if he leads by 10 lengths in the underwood. There's another friend of the show. Hello, Manny and Pete. Um, please bring back the relentless gallop. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot to play out here. I, my feeling is that that race. All the horses coming through this race are going to be extremely vulnerable to other form lines. I'd love to see three-year-olds taking the good three-year-olds taking the model weight for age. Is this I think, I think there are a lot of these no, going. No, these are the third, talking, fourth up there going. Maybe second up there will be pots, yeah, but down the track. I mean, it all, it all can change quickly. It's a nice clean-up for a lot of those horses. The weir horses, yeah. Jamaica, the, the Ma horses. They've all got bigger fish to fry six weeks' time, you know? So on that True, point. but I'm... I, so at this, at this stage, I'm thinking... The coming winners of those races are not going to come out of this race, is what I'm thinking. I might be wrong. Post some starters are the one I'm giving a pass to. Yeah, because definitely. I'm giving it a pass, yeah. but the rest of them, I'm just saying, to me, Mahani's run too well in comparison for me to have any interest in this form at all. Because so so okay. so the anchor drops, how bad was the anchor drops? In what? That yeah. race. The, the no, it's deterioration. Deterioration. Just deterioration. Yeah. I, um, so just quickly, uh, I have no problem with the United States ride, do you? Because Narc Central, as you call it, exploded it afterwards. It's Cape Million. I just thought well, it was it just genuinely unlucky. Yeah, genuinely. Fast race. Was in the right yeah. So Mahani, DK, 137.23 uh, overall. They've run 137.01, so it's about a length and a half, right? But he's run his last 636. They've run their last 636.7. Yeah, you so can they, see that, got, that was the clear. Yeah, they were six lengths faster early. Yeah, but so, they, so, so, so they've got six lengths faster early and five lengths slower late. That's yes. Not, so I'm well, that should have been better. That's, that's no good horses. for weight for eight horses. That's yeah. just no, not good no, it didn't, it didn't, but it didn't look that. No, but I'm just saying, well, those horses wouldn't have been fit. And yes. Things like that. Fitness yeah. might have been a kip. Yeah, yeah. there late. Um, but you would have liked to see them Again, the Victorian weight for age form is the B form. Yeah. It's the same last year. We tumbled into it last year. Yes. And we got there. Right, you know, yeah. and, we, and even in the autumn with the, yeah. um, the New Zealand horse and things like that, and the Sydney horse is just walking away, didn't they? Because I've got to do a school pick up. Just in the last race, it, does Her Majesty watch the show? <laughs> Bold Sniper uh, hello, is the Majesty cleaner, the Kenjawood type horse, and if they run quickly with it, he's a chance to win some nice races, and if they do what they did Sunday, he's got no chance. So okay. just go for it and let him run. It's all Take Regan like Bayless off him. Everything was good. Who ran into it? Then he stopped. Exactly. Keep going. Keep going, Keep going son. I'm not dropping. I'm a bit annoyed about Lord Durant's run there. I know he's on the backup, but um, he ran well. I don't like that. I mean, I've been backing also. I've been backing. backing and backing and backing, and then he and pulls out that yeah. run. Who's the best two? If he had a one, I would. I, would, uh, I don't know. I'd best two from the middle. I'd be able to talk oh, about the, um, it. Lloyd Williams or observation on United States. Uh, Whispering Brook and Tossin Stardom for me. Your best two. I'll add a loft to the uh, Lord Probably Williams uh, yeah. train. Um, yeah, that'll do me. I can't. I can't. I said something, man. I can't remember the word. Uh, I'll go Whispering Book and Heatherly. All right, Ralph's going to shoot off and do the school pickup. I'm just going to cut the things to the next. Good luck, Ralph. Thanks, boys. Thank See you much. after. Thank you, Thank, you um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A couple of little odd points. A friend of ours, DK, the great Anthony Dowdy. Uh, 
Rails Bookie here in Melbourne, Big Bookie. He's actually uh, off for the rest of the week. He's flying out today, I believe. Rio? Yeah, he's off to Rio to watch um, his daughter Kate compete in the Paralympics. So, good Tri- luck to Kate. Kate. Yeah. Follow and her on Facebook. He's got her own page, Kate, Kate Dowdy Triathlete or something. Yeah, so, so definitely. Her follows. He's throwing up lots of stuff from the, from the Athletes Village and things like that. So, she's a great girl, Kate. So, yeah, uh, and a medal chance too, I think. Yeah, no, she's, yeah. she's, she's, she's fine. She's, she was in equestrian as a, yeah. as, a, as a kid and everything came up through the Pony Club and equestrian and everything and then has graduated to win the last few years to triathlon. So, so uh, yeah, no, good luck, Kate. And good luck to Kate. Well, and I just remember my horse to follow too out of the meeting. <coughs> yes. so three-year-old fillies, you know, there, there they are doing good things. Uh, my three-year-old filly to follow out of the meeting is Sebring Dream. I think she's um, M Walker. Is that the one M Walker said good luck beating her in the thousand guineas? Yes. Did he say that? Did he? Oh, oh well. Thanks. You give. <laughs> no, I, I, agree, I agree with him. She, of the Victorians, she'll be very hard to beat. Them. Okay. Um, so make sure you head to one to follow. Grab the package coming up for the rest of the spring, and also make sure you're here at the All Nations with us on Sunday afternoon, the 27th. Get in touch with us or whatever. Yeah. Just, but, but that's it. Put the day aside and Tell me. gather gathering of punters and cookies and whatever it'll be. Everyone will be here. So yeah, and, and get the boys from the shops all here, and we're all mates now. <laughs> MBL's in. There's, uh, there's one thing for sure, you won't be short of a conversation. No, nah, that's right. And people have said to me, oh, geez, you know, so you're doing the show at Potts, and geez, that Potts seems like a good bloke. Love to have a beer with him. Well, this is your chance. Yeah. You know, everyone come along and say good day, and um, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be good fun. So make sure I you hope I don't disappoint you. <laughs> Get a few pots in your mate, you'll be sweet. Pots with pots. DK, yep. good to see you. Yeah, mate, good luck with Gift of Music. Do we know okay, where he's going to be on Friday? The last got to give us the last synthetic meeting, so not ideal to 10, 10 day um, break, but it's the last meeting on the synthetic and he loves the 1200 round there, so we'll give it one more run and um, then we'll work out where to go from there, so I just want a low draw and Jamie to pull out another peach and he might be in the finish on what he did the other day, so um, fingers crossed. Beautiful, so week ahead, 64 or 50? 64, 64. Yeah, he's up to a 61 right now, he got four points for that. Uh, sand down tomorrow, full set from Potts there, Mornington Thursday. Uh, Geelong Friday, Cast Mr. Music. Somewhere, isn't there, I saw. Uh, be all right. And then we go to Flemington for Maccabi Day. And I'm trying to remember somewhere. where the Saturday is. Somewhere good. Yeah, like we're worried to be Warwick 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 and Donald. Keep them up. We need more Wimmer <laughs> meetings on a Saturday. I'll give the punters a, uh, an early tip for tomorrow. 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 There's a um, lowly mares race, race five, full of our you know, mares going around and around and around. And um, there's a Kiwi coming over that's been beating the... Um, Males over there and looks a nice horse to me. It's called Shillelagh. Is so that the S. Ortridge horse? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's, uh, they interviewed him on uh, uh, racing.com about yeah. it. I asked him about this good horse. Ex- extravagant. And yeah, they said, yeah. oh, what about this man? So, obviously, he's, got plenty, of, he's got plenty of talent. Yeah, by the sound of it. You're probably going to find it on the website. But, she um, looks to me to be <coughs> really hard to beat the mares race and they're betting five to two or something. Mm. So. Beautiful. There we go, punters. Uh, good luck and we'll see you next week.